So we've just come out of Brent Cross Station and we're going to find the point where the Dollis Brook becomes the River Brent. And that's the start of our walk today. But first, I've got to walk along a, a short section of the, the brutal North Circular Road. Just on the other side of this, uh, of this foot... Oh my lord. <laughs> Just on the other side of this footbridge here, we'll find the River Brent and that's the start of our River Rhine excursion. Wow. Here it is, the beautiful waters of the River Brent surely one of the sacred rivers of London and the official start of today's walk. And there was uh, there's some structures here on either side of the river that are now decayed like little follies, little mini kind of turreted uh, viewpoints over the river. I wonder what this was remains of. I think there's a sign back there saying Brent Lodge. Was there a lodge here? Was there once a grand house that incorporated the river into its grounds? I'm sure somebody will know in the comments. So actually the entrance to the river path, a little bit further along the North Circular, and it's marked as being part of the Capital Ring. So the, uh, the Capital Ring is kind of like the, the baby brother of the London Loop, its younger sibling. So before we go any further, and before we get into the real kind of admin of today's walk, I feel like we should, to, should acknowledge and pay homage to, to the great writer Nick Papadimitro, my old walking buddy Nick Papadimitro, who lives not very far away from here, so I can't walk around this area without thinking of Nick. It's kind of like the, the genus loci of this part of London. So this is the viaduct carrying the Piccadilly line over the Pimsbrook Valley, and this is where the stream uh, that we followed down from North Finchley actually joins the Pimsbrook and we're just going to go along and find that now. Great view isn't it? The corridors of time. We wrote a wonderful book called Scarp which covers uh, part of the area that where we will be towards the end of this walk I hope. I hope we'll get as far as Scarp, the uh, what do you call it, the North Middlesex South Hertfordshire Tertiary Escarpment. Great big feature of land that runs across North London between London and Hertfordshire, although Nick would hate to hear me calling it London and Hertfordshire, Middlesex and Hertfordshire. And so, uh, yeah, Nick, <laughs> thinking of you today. Right, we've paid homage to Nick, we can crack on now. So this is the first stretch of the River Brent. This is the uh, the beginning of the River Brent, we'll see the actual point where it becomes the Brent, just a little bit along the path here. So the subject of our walk today isn't the Brent, we'll do that another day, which means we'll be coming back here, but it's the Dollis Brook, we're going to walk a bit of the Dollis Valley Green Walk. I don't think we'll get to do the whole lot today, sunset's at four o'clock and uh, I think it's about half past one at the moment. So we'll just enjoy as much of it as we can and put the emphasis on just enjoying being out here. I had a real desire to be here today. Sometimes walks call to you, they beckon you. And this wasn't on my plan. It's been on my plan actually for about five years, but it wasn't on the plan to do in the next few weeks. But I don't know, there's something about the winter light through here, which is really special. And I could just imagine walking this path. So. We're going to follow this river north, it heads north, ultimately right to the edge of London, uh, near, not far from Boreham Wood, actually Moat Mount Nature Reserve is where the Dollis Brook rises, um, so we'll just walk as far as we can actually, and just enjoy being out in this beautiful green corridor carved out by the beguiling Dollis Brook. This little uh, lake here, obviously fed by the Brent, is called the Decoy, I guess named after the Decoy Brook, which joined the Brent uh, right where we first encountered the Brent, actually. I should have mentioned that at the time. 
and it's the first of, I think, of, of at least three tributaries of this watercourse the Dollis Brook and the Brent that we'll encounter. I think the Folly Brook is further up and also the, uh, the Mutton Brook. I'd say the way this is landscaped, A, with the creation of this, of this kind of lake here fed by the Decoy Brook and the Brent and some of the trees, the plants, sort of pine trees and things planted along here. I'd say my hunch is that this is the former grounds of a, of a once large house. I could be wrong, but it's worth looking it up uh, when I get home, or I'm sure someone will know in the comments. Might even be Nick. M Nick might jump in here with a comment, correct, sort of chastising me for not knowing that this was once the grounds of Brook Lodge or Brent House or something like that. The 1873 Ordnance Survey map shows the lake and woodland known as Decoy Wood in the grounds of Decoy House and Brent Bridge House, an 18th century stucco building. Nearby was Decoy Farm. Wikipedia claims that the lake could be a remnant of the duck decoy created by the abbots of Westminster as long as a thousand years ago. So here it is. This is the point at which the Dollis Brook becomes the Brent. So this is uh, for us today, this is the beginnings of the Dollis Brook. In reality, it's actually the end of the Dollis Brook. And this is where uh, the, this is where we pick up the Dollis Valley Green Walk, which for some reason starts in Hampstead Garden Suburb. I'm not entirely sure why, because it's a couple of miles from here. And this is the Mutton Brook, another of the tributaries of the Dollis Brook and the Brent. That'll be a walk for another day, won't it? I think that'll be a really good walk. And here is the sacred spot where the Mutton Brook makes its confluence with the Dollis Brook. So Nick used to have a really wonderful um, website called River Run Barnet, which was all about the rivers of the London Borough of Barnet, where we are today. I don't think it's online anymore. I'll see if I can find a link to it, but it's really good. And I think Nick's project at that point before SCARP was to plot the roots of all the rivers of, uh, of his borough of Barnet. I love the rivers of Middlesex and uh, you know, I've done a detailed study of the rivers of the London Borough of Barnet. They seem to be, to be like the uh, bloodstream of the landscape. That's it really. That's of course the, uh, the high ground. There's lots of water coming off the high ground around Scarp, around the, the North Middlesex, South Hertfordshire tertiary escarpment. And it all drains down into what becomes the Brent Valley when you look at a map, you see lots of these little tributaries all trickling down. The Dollis Brook itself has two sources, but then numerous other kind of little bits that branch off into the hills. There is that slight whiff of sewage here that you often get uh, on these urban river walks. And a lot of time it's not actual like out and out sewage as such. It's kind of like, I think what's what they call grey water, where people have kind of built extensions and things and not really plumbed them properly. And you get runoff into the river of kind of household wastewater really. So it's got a kind of slightly chemically smell to it. And of course the river's here in these kind of uh, suburban stretches. It's picking up the runoff from the road, all the kind of like the heavy metals and the particulates that come off the cars, sit on the roads and the rainwater washes it into the river. Not terribly clean, I would have thought, but still it represents a really kind of valuable slice of, of wildlife that just cuts through the suburban realm. They're such an important part of the ecology of the city pipe jutting out into the river that's doing no good is it that pipe I would have thought this is quite a dramatic cascade here isn't it it must be fulfilling some sort of environmental function I would have thought 
but it's a really uh, dramatic feature to find just here amongst the streets of, uh, I think we're in Hendon now, I think we've moved on from Brent Cross to, towards Hendon. Here's a very handy map showing the, the route of the walk. We're here, just approaching Finchley. You can see where it goes up through Woodside Park, Totteridge, Whetstone, up to New Barnet, and then it ends up here. Moat Mount, open space, a nature reserve. You can just see right near Boreham Wood, Hertfordshire, Arkley up there. Um, it's less than two hours till sunset, so I don't know. If we get up to Totteridge, I'll be happy. It's a measure of how my kind of attitude has changed uh, over, well, I think since the pandemic began really, to walks like this, is once upon a time I wouldn't have bothered even starting this to film it, unless I thought I could finish the entire thing. I wouldn't have seen the value in filming just a short section of the, of the Dollis Valley Way, given that it's a 10 mile walk, so it's, <laughs> it's not exactly something that needs to be divided over a number of days. But my attitude to this now is that it's just worth doing stuff for the beauty of being out here, just enjoying the environment, just taking pleasure of any amount of walk that you can get really. Uh, I think it was all those months, many months, many months when you couldn't really go far from home and you were restricted to doing short walks. And it's great just to be out here really and appreciate whatever you can do, whether you walk two miles, five miles, 10 miles or whatever. Wow, this is a really beautiful open space, isn't it? Oh, isn't this a really delightful little stretch here? It becomes a babbling brook over the gravels. Although that pipe jutting out there is a little bit ominous, isn't it? Beautiful little bird down there. What is that? Is that a chaffinch or something? I'm going to take a guess. Apparently you can see herons and kingfishers along the Dollis Brook. I don't think we'll find them in this more urban section, but who knows? Who knows? I do want to learn to definitively be able to tell the difference between a heron and an egret. I think the heron has uh, grey and black on its head, doesn't it, where the egret doesn't? Maybe I've got that wrong. The name Dollis, I've seen three different explanations or origins of it. One being uh, the Old English or Britonic tongue, uh, a word I think that is Dillis, I think if that's what I put up on the screen here, meaning a flood, or from the Anglo-Saxon uh, Dwillis or Dilli or something like that. Anyway, I'll put it up on the screen, meaning erratic, and a lot more literal um, middle English, uh, I mean literally dole, to dole out like a section of common land, you know when common land was a portion you'd have a little slice of it, that was a dole of land so it could come from that. Take your pick, which one do you prefer? <laughs> some allotments over there which are you know a real feature of urban river walks obviously because it's uh, land that often maybe can't be built upon because it's traditionally been uh, flooded or it's too wet or something but you will see allotments along the sides of urban rivers so at this bridge here it looks like we're leaving the river for a short section as we go around the houses i think I'm right beside the river there, you can see a stink pipe indicating uh, that there's a sewage main running beneath the ground here somewhere. 
So the Dollis Brook is running in a culvert on the other side of the road that's the left. And I think just up here we have the majestic viaduct, and this is the Mill Hill viaduct. And that is where I think we can rejoin the path beside the river. What an amazing structure this is. Built to carry the railway, now carries the northern line. It was built in 1860. A real marvel of Victorian engineering, isn't it? Sometimes when planning a walk, you just get a picture in your head. It's just an image of a moment on the walk, a place, a particular location or something. And the image for this walk was this viaduct. I could see myself in this winter light passing underneath this viaduct near sunset. That's a brilliant moment, really wonderful moment. This is really what I came out here for today. These sort of autumn colours, this light and this majestic viaduct. So just beside these allotments here, we turn back off the road once more into the open spaces. My uh, tree identification isn't great. But I think we might have a couple of redwood trees here. There's one, two, three I can see. They appear to be redwoods. And there's another couple around here again. It makes me wonder whether this is part of an old landscape grounds of some estate. This is, uh, this is a bit of a pain. I actually don't know where the diversion goes. So we've got to find the diversion. This could be interesting. Actually, the diversion is uh, quite well signposted. We just have to go up through this uh, housing estate and then we'll be back on the river. That's the way to Finchley Central. And we are now heading in the direction of Whetstone. the Dollis Brook here, back on the Dollis Valley Way, about half an hour to 45 minutes before it gets dark. Sun sets at just after four and then it gets dark pretty quickly from there. As regular viewers of my videos will know, I love this last bit of the daylight as you're walking into the dying light. It's majestic. It's even nicer in many respects in winter. I don't know why. I usually really mourn the passing of summer and those long summer days. But this year I really feel a real sense of kind of optimism about, about the winter months, about the walks ahead as the days close in and we head towards the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice. I think it's based on the fact that in previous years, I think I acknowledge that some of my best walks, most memorable walks happen in this period here between like the middle of the end of November through to the middle of March. I can feel it, I think it's gonna be a great winter of walking. Fantastic winter of walking. What walks have you got planned for the, for the winter season? We've gotta go around the houses a little bit again here. I think we have to loop around the road and then back onto the riverbank, by which time it might be dark. So, but let's wait and see how we get on. 
So just back there was where the Folly Brook makes its confluence with the Dollis Brook. And that's uh, got its source also somewhere up there in the northern hills. So just the last of the light now, we're turning off the housing estate back on the Dollis Valley Way for a short section. Although this is a walk that's been suggested to me a number of times over the years, I, I first actually became aware of it, I think it was the beginning of 2015, when I was doing some filming up here near Woodside, Totteridge and Whetstone, uh, on a housing estate up here. And I think I saw a sign when I came out of the tube station for the Dollis Valley Way, and I was looking at a map, and I noticed it. And I thought, oh, that would be a good thing to come back and do one day. And I think I came up here, I don't know, two, at least twice, if not three times, to do some filming. And uh, I can say it's taken me that long, so, you know, six and a half, nearly seven years to get back here. And I have a feeling that I mention it in my, in my new book, yet to be published. That will be published in 2022. Mark my words, you will have the, you'll hear me going on about lots. <laughs> <laughs> next year and I think I mention it when I do a kind of uh, I write about the things I was filming over there and what happened there and I've set the scene by describing the landscape I'm pretty sure I mentioned the Dollis Brook I might be wrong maybe <laughs> maybe I need to revise that chapter and include this walk I don't think I'll do that but just do this last little section here of the path that will take us up to Totteridge and Whetstone station and I think that'll be I think it'll be dark by the time we get there it's interesting the way a river changes its character along its course here it's a lot more uh, overgrown than it was in the lower sections so a lot harder to get access to the river through here. There's been some really glorious autumn colours on this walk today, haven't there? Here we are getting a final show just before the walk ends. Well, this is really our last sighting of the Dollis Brook as it disappears into darkness. You can just see some of the last light glimmering in the water there. This carpet of autumn leaves leads me to the road there and a little parade of shops and the end of the walk. And what a glorious walk it's been. Well, thank you so much for joining me on that wonderful walk along the gentle little Dollis Brook. And what a beautiful walk it was. It was everything I hoped it would be. It was everything I needed today. Oh, I think when we come back though, I think we'll come back to the same point at Brent Cross, but we'll go along the River Brent. We'll see how much of the River Brent we can get done in the day. 17 miles down to the Thames at Brentford. And every inch of it a glorious walk. So, thanks again. Hope you have a great week. Hope you take care. And as I always like to say, <laughs> I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. But wherever it is, it'll be somewhere glorious. Take care. Bye-bye.